Vice President Kashim Shatima joins other heads of state and government to brainstorm on transforming food systems in Rome. The 10th House of Representatives rolls out 13 point legislative agenda. Our speaker appeals to resident doctors to shelve industrial action. That we would deploy every legislative instrument available to us to ensure that you are fully compensated and rewarded for this act of action. Troops raid IPOP camps in Anambra recover arms and other illegal items. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, our focus is on the conversion of vehicles from petrol to auto gas. All right, since the removal of petrol subsidies, subsidy, Nigerians and indeed motorists have been grossly impacted by the sharp price increases of the pump price of their fuel pump. Now, while many Nigerians feel the removal was sudden, others believe that it was long overdue and that the inevitable had been delayed far too long. That's right, uh, Claire. Now, the deed, as the saying goes, has been done. Now it's time to face reality and manage the consequences. Nigerians have therefore been making adjustments in their daily activities, particularly as it relates to transportation. And while the government is working out palliatives to cushion the impact of the subsidy removal, motorists are already shopping for alternative energy sources to power their vehicles as the price of petrol continues to soar. All right, let's take you back to 2020, when former President Mahmoud Buhari launched the National Auto Gas Rollout Initiative it was part of the National Gas Expansion Program. And the aim was, among other things, convert vehicles from running on petrol to running on gas. Now, the government at the time had promised that one million vehicles will be converted to run on gas before the end of 2021. Whether that target uh, was achieved or not is a matter for uh, another day. But but in January last year, which was uh, 2022, the government also unveiled the framework for the deployment of compressed natural gas, that's CNG, across the country. Really not plans for the deployment of auto gas in uh, filling stations and the conversion of 200,000 commercial vehicles to run on gas uh, this year. Again, this buttresses the importance of the program even before the removal of uh, petrol subsidy. Okay, so as it stands now, the reality of rising costs of petrol makes it very urgent for such framework to be fast-tracked and implemented to the latter so that Nigerians can have access to cheaper alternatives of powering their vehicles. Now, Nigerians are not only in need of cost-effective, but also cost-efficient and cleaner energy for transportation in Nigeria. Experts suggest that converting uh, vehicles from petrol to auto gas, uh, of course Nigeria has gas in abundance, will ensure that the cost of transportation that has increased dramatically uh, obviously comes down. Now this is because, according to those experts, money required to fill uh, the tank of, uh, of a car with petrol will reduce by, in some cases, nearly 40 percent. Beautiful. Again, the experts maintain that as a worthwhile venture with potential benefits for the economy and the environment, government must fine-tune its policies and work closely with the private sector to ensure its success. But considering the current state of the downstream sector, of course, of the petroleum industry, which has been deregulated, getting marketers and other operators to invest massively in the required infrastructure might just be a tall order. But uh, this quest for the conversion of vehicles to auto gas comes with its own challenges, just as it brings up many opportunities. Now, what are the requirements for converting a vehicle and at what cost? Is the technology readily available locally or would it require, again, the use of gas for an exchange uh, to import the, the requirements? How accessible will the conversion kits be for motorists, particularly uh, in um, non-urban areas, are there hazards associated with such conversion? 
Okay, Slay, I think this is a very, very important topic for everyone at this time. It's, it's, uh, in fact, uh, we couldn't have discussed this topic any other time than now. No, no, absolutely. Uh, when uh, the cost of uh, petrol uh, is, again, being expected to, to, go, to go higher. But there are so many questions to ask uh, regarding the uh, national um, expansion gas program or auto gas, if you may. Uh, so many things about conversion, about the technicalities involved, about where to get your cars converted. And we don't even know exactly how much it will cost to have your cars converted from petrol to auto gas. But we have gathered those who should know explain they will be here later on in the program to explain to all some of these technicalities and what you may do on this note i welcome you everyone to good morning nigeria live on the network service it's tuesday's edition and i'm claire adilabu abdurazak i'm kingsley osadolo i join my colleague to also welcome you to the program on the network service I'm mean, a Nigerian television authority and we're broadcasting from our headquarters studios here in the nation's capital of Abuja. In the course of the program, we'll take our usual highlights, uh, including business and, of course, focus on New Super Review. But for now, let's uh, join Tessie O'Meary, who has the morning news. Morning, Tessie. Good morning, Kingsley. Good morning, Claire. Hello, Nigerians, and welcome to the morning news. Vice President Kashim Shetim and other heads of state are participating in the UN Food System Summit in Rome, Italy for the first stock-taking moment summit with the theme Transforming Food Systems for People, Planet and Prosperity. The theme for the high-level session is Innovative Financing for Food System Transformation, the case of Nigeria, and the side event on scaling up multi-stakeholders, collaboration and investment in the implementation of food systems transformation pathways in Nigeria. The event is organized in collaboration with the Rome-based UN agencies, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the International Fund for Agricultural Development and World Food Programme, as well as the UN Food Systems Coordination Hub and wider UN System. And back home, Speaker House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas has appealed to president or resident doctors in the country to suspend their proposed industrial action while finding a middle ground with government for meeting their demands. The Speaker also says the 10th Assembly has identified 13 major areas that will require urgent legislative attention towards good governance. And assure you that we will deploy every legislative instrument available to us to ensure that you are fully compensated and rewarded for this act of patriotism. We urge you as leaders to appeal to your members to suspend any action while we interface with the executive arm of government, we equally seek your understanding on the, on the fact that a new administration just came on board. Mixing modernity with uh, tradition in Nigeria's constitution has been a subject of interest since the return of democracy in 1999. President of the Senate, Godswi Lapabio, during an engagement with National Council of Traditional Rulers, says giving them a constitutional role will help curb insecurity. You can achieve only limited success in any operation. The traditional father is a reservoir of information. Everybody runs to the traditional. Sometimes we pretend there is no politician that wants to be anything in this country that does not visit the traditional fara to pay homage. And on electoral matters, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says the best way to improve the electoral process is by stock taking review and evaluation of previous exercise. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu said this while meeting with civil society organizations as part of post election review meetings with critical stakeholders. We were meticulous in our preparations for the election and there have been many positive developments in this regard. One area is the repeal and reenactment of the Electoral Act 2010 into the Electoral Act 
2022. Troops of the Nigerian Army, in conjunction with Anambra Vigilante Group, have destroyed camps of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOP and its armed affiliates, the Eastern Security Network in Oroma and Omwemelum Anam in Anambra's West Local Government Area. A statement by the Army uh, spokesperson, Brigadier General Onyema Nwachku, says the troops raided the camps on Sunday, 23rd July 2023. During the operation, the troops recovered one AK-47 rifle, one AKMS rifle, three Lexus SUVs, and two motorcycles. In a similar operation, troops also raided IPOP camp at Miata Anam in Anambra South, where an IPOP fighter was eliminated in combat while another was captured. Several arms and police uniforms were recovered from the criminals. And that's the morning news. Good morning, Nigeria continues with Claire and Kingsley after this time out to stay with us. Welcome back to the program. It's Good Morning Nigeria Tuesday's edition, and we're live here in Abuja from our studios at the headquarters. Let's talk a bit of business. Now, key players in the cocoa value chain are advocating increase in their production to enable Nigeria to compete in the global market. And, I, and I, I, I just want to say it's been long overdue. But let's get all the details with Alika Okbanachi Arwa. Active players in cocoa production have called for improved support for cocoa farmers in Nigeria to optimally increase production by using climate smart agriculture to combat effects of the climate change and provide interventions for irrigation. Government um, mandate is to create enabling environment. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that they have to build around policy that will make business easy. They have to build policy. They have to think of research that will take care of drought with the, with the new phase of climate change. They also stress the need for synergy among stakeholders to regulate the activities of sharp practices in the cocoa value chain in order to reduce the incidence of rejection of Nigeria cocoa beans in the international markets. If we have done all we know or all we should do, comply with the standards of the market that we want to send our product to, meet the um, uh, both regulatory compliance, if there are voluntary standards that the market is looking for, meet those voluntary standards, if there is traceability system and all of that, and they say, okay, this product cannot get into our country. We cannot bring up that matter at WTO to say, look, we regard it as barrier to trade. With business news, Alika Obanachi, Arua. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alika, for the business news packet. Coming up next, we take a look at the front page ads in some of the papers we have this morning. Welcome back, and um, you're right on time as we welcome the only Chooks the boy, Chukudi Okole Ubaja. Hello, Chukudi. Uh, good morning, Claire. If wishes were yep, yep. horses, you will rejuven rejuvenate me. <laughs> by, uh, uh, I will out. certainly ride. <laughs> Kingsley, how are you doing? Oh, wow. She's trying to rob me of some elderly, you know, inclination, and I'm resisting it. What is that inclination? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put on my red cap. <laughs> Good you to see you again. To hear, and you don't want to see <laughs> All right, Chukude, right. thank you for joining Roger. us. Yes, uh, Casey, you want to start? <laughs> uh, well, uh, you can kick off with the punch. I think the punch uh, has... It's very uh, punchy this yes. morning. <laughs> okay, so let's... Uh, uh, it's kicking off on the subsidy pain. Uh, that's the, the lead story. It says, Labor talks tough. Asu protesters condemn relief plans 
And this story you can find on page two. Uh, it comes with two writers. Sanu Asu say fuel subsidy unintelligently removed. NLC meets today. And TUC rejects 5% telecom tax. Planned tuition hike. While Kwara Ugu roll out palliatives. And the picture story uh, you'll see this morning is, uh, I think this happened in Edo State uh, from the inscriptions on the banner there. Civil society groups under the ages of the Edo civil society organizations during a protest against recent hike in pump price of petrol in Benin City in Edo State. That happened on Monday. And uh, as you can see, some of the inscriptions tell the whole story. Okay, so let's move away from that now to other stories trending uh, at the foot of the paper. Uh, I don't know if we have the paper. Um, uh, okay, so we do not have it. I could just uh, do something like this. Yes, okay, so if we can have something like this. Um, we now have Antrax FCT list. It's just down here. List uh, 1 million cattle for vaccination. It's quite here. Uh, you may not be able to see it clearly, but um, I'm sure my cameraman is trying to zoom in. Now, the other one is Benue police recover dismembered corpse of missing uh, lady and two uni Abuja lecturers dismissed for sexual harassment. This just right here. Uh, details of that you can find on page eight. Two uni Abuja lecturers dismissed for sexual harassment. Sorry, I, I, I didn't get that correct. Okay, so this is. This is it. There are other stories trending just at the bottom, at the uh, up above the masthead. Most Nigerian leaders' knowledge of development shallow. Okay, most Nigerian leaders' knowledge of development shallow. And this is a uh, 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 courtesy of uh, former President Olusegun Passenger. Navy won't stop burning vessels, ferrying stolen crude. You can see also there uh, that one is trending, and uh, I can't see this clearly now. Well, let me just try. Okay, forex crisis, passengers grown as foreign airlines hike fares. So um, this is just um, uh, the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. It's quite a punchy, and um, I'll just put this paper away for Kinsley to take other stories. Claire, thanks. But you know, when we were in elementary school, part of what you did just now would have countered against you. <laughs> when, when, during the uh, reading class, you are not supposed to use your finger to trace the words that you are reading. Because you are supposed to have... <laughs> because that amounted to intellectual manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> no, not intellectual manual labor, actually. I labor. You know, when you have the reader, when you have Claire, when you have the reader, I don't know which one you, you guys use, but uh, I'm telling you Claire now. We were called the NOEC, New Oxford English Course. Book one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six. You come to the uh, center of the class and you hold your reader like this and you'll be reading it. So if you, you're supposed to put your eye on the, on the book. Exactly. So if you are doing it like this, then of course you get, uh, you get punished, you get sanctioned. Uh, but at unfortunately... That, at that age, yes. Yes. But my age now, I can see. Yeah, but even I, then, I, even yes. then, I, 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 with hindsight, you, you, the teachers had no way of determining if any child had a problem, yes, maybe yes. a child was long sighted. Oh, yeah, and, you know, I mean, we in, the, in elementary school, we're not yeah, using yeah. reading glasses. So if you saw a child squint eyed and then trying to uh, get that sorted out, okay, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at the window page of uh, Leadership newspaper. Above the name flag, uh, there's a speculative headline there. We'll skip that. It has to do with the NPC. Now, TUC gives federal government two-week ultimatum on palliatives. And then uh, real estate gets 21.8 trillion Naira loan in four years. They got loans, real estate. Not that you spent 21.8 trillion Naira on mortgages, but that the real estate got loans. That's a funny story, if you ask me. <laughs> Reps vow to recover $9 billion gas flaring fines from marine oil firms. Adamawa wreck. Let tribunal decide my petition first. Binani tells court. National Assembly. Firore as Lagos reps pick four, in quotes, juicy committee chairs. Bichi, Tunji Oni, Benson, Raji, and Adeyemi for appropriation. Works, defense, house services, and agreed chairs. Betara rejects works committee chair. Group spoils for showdown. 
IGP, that's Inspector General of Police, insists on withdrawal of mobile police from VIPs. Leaders have failed Nigerians, says Obasan John. Police arrest four suspects over a plot to attack Atiku and others. And very quickly, from the Nation newspaper, um, it will take the following. How we will end sit at home by state governors. Kano not in support. Tribunal sacks Delta Labour Party rep for Elumelu. And foreign inflows rise by 70% in Q2, that's second quarter. Illegal buildings in FCT to go. Edo government begins work on 19.6 billion Naira hotel. Subsidy removal. More states roll out palliatives. Kwara, Ogun, Imo announce support for workers and citizens. Chigawa boosts farmers and others. TUC, that's Trading on Congress, six quick action. Why industries shun discourse by experts. And NEC criticizes high electricity consumption rate by households. Photograph there shows the Vice President uh, Kashim Shetima inspecting processed food items from Nigeria during the UN Food System Summit in Rome, Italy yesterday. Chukudi. Thank you, Kingsley. Uh, quickly, uh, Obasan just says uh, leaders have failed Nigerians. Uh, he says in, in, in the punch, most Nigerian leaders' knowledge of development shallow. Let's not rake up controversy. Uh, the point is, are we where we would like to be an honest and earnest answer is likely to advance our cause as a nation. That's how I'm going to treat that. And no point getting into the theatricals of it. Uh, but um, a protest happened in Benin City yesterday. The Sun actually calls it a uh, protest rocks Benin City over fuel price. And because this is about Nigerians, about our people, it would amount to responsibility if we don't touch on it at all. And you say, is the good faith and well wishes for the current government wearing thin already? Shouldn't we wait to see how the promised politics pan out? The eight weeks TUC, NLC, and the government representatives projected for working out a framework is not over yet, if you ask me. It's not as if we are not empathizing with Nigerians. Far from it. But how we got to where we are at the moment did not happen overnight. Can we please appeal to Nigerians to still hold out a little more? A pledge, if I remember, has been made to return the economy to good health and in the process lessen, if not totally eliminate, the hardship that comes from it, from a very bad economy. And this last base bit falls in tandem with the observation of Senator Adam Shemole. <coughs> he says the president and the APC didn't promise overnight solution. <laughs> There's no way an overnight solution would be possible anyway. Uh, now, the key word then becomes patience in the context of all that is happening. And may I quickly point out that the body language so far by the present administration has not suggested any iota of deafness to the issues or situation on hand. The social investment program is being tinkered with, if you remember, for more transparency, transparency and honest execution. And also the 8,000 Naira promise to household is, households is being reviewed by the presidency. I think we should manage a little more patience and benefit of the doubt to the new government. We will get there. It's a matter of time. You see, when things like this happen, I, I gave a lift to four people yesterday, and when they dropped and I said, look, I, I'm not a commercial driver, you guys go. They started treating me like a demigod. The lady almost knelt down to thank me for, 500, for, for sparing her, paying 500 naira. You know, it tells you how things are. You know, so it's not as yes. if we are not, we're being mindless. Yes. You know, Chukode, I, yes. I agree with you. While um we plead you know mm -hmm. that nigerians give understanding I mean, be patient yes with, with the government indeed we that, that that's quite understandable but the other you know uh, uh, stakeholders the other uh, uh, people that make up i mean government is everybody well, should, sure. o should also, should like also show, yes Every should also show the same empathy i mean i mean what is this you know spike in increase of this uh, fee in all in all the institutions in all the schools at this point in time 
they should also show should, that that's my personal yeah, opinion yeah, yeah they Claire, should show Claire. some sum of they I, should also i agree yes follow you know i agree and and but do not lose sight of the bandwagon effect the knock-on effect it's like the domino you throw it one of the objects you're hitting it goes down and it takes the other others with it a school proprietor will tell you that with the fuel price going up now the diesel that has become the main source of power needs the, 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 the petrol that goes mm. to bring the children maybe mm. she has about five of them five mm. vehicles mm. she needs to fuel it so there's no way they can't and that goes for the schools as well I'm just trying to explain it, yeah. not justify it. I, 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 know you there, I know there should be the bandwagon effect. effect. You can't run away from yes. it. So what happens? We all, well, we all, we all, we all got uh, impacted by it. On Good Morning Nigeria, a couple of years ago, uh, we had a conversation on arbitrary pricing of goods and services in Nigeria. <laughs> Associations just wake up and then set their prices. And if you are a member of that association, you are bound to comply. So they will wake up, look at what POS operators, they're having a running exactly. battle now with the yes. federal, with the federal uh, uh, exactly. competition uh, exactly. and consumer protection commission. They're having, they're having a running battle. You go to the market, they will tell you five uh, uh, tomatoes Toma will cost you 500 naira. Go run, trek throughout that market. You won't get, any, you will get anything than cheaper than that. Yes. So just fix, they just fix yes. price. The same thing with the airlines. Airlines will wake up a one-way ticket now. If you book uh, ahead, it's not less than sixty-five thousand. One way. That is for a flight of about an hour or less. One sixty-five thousand, uh, uh, and it's virtually the same thing. And then you are asking yourself, what's going on? You, it's some people just they just fix price. You and I can wake up down fix prices. Yes. The same thing with the transporters. Incidentally, when there was a time some months ago before. Uh, all of this actually hit home. We had a discussion on, on what needed to be done uh, by the respective state governments. And a former commissioner for transport in Lagos was our guest. And he said, look, yes, there was a time uh, fuel prices also went up and then transporters just raised their prices. But they had a round table with uh, the leaders of the transporters. I said, look, let's actually crunch these numbers. Let's break it down. Let's see how it affects you. I don't want to, I, I don't want to uh, minimize the impact of what we are facing. But I tell you, when you actually calculate it, uh, it's not one that will warrant the kind of percentage increases that we are seeing across a broad range of, of, of items. So they had a round table, and they, and they discussed and said, look, this is the, they, they agreed that this will be the appropriate margin for yeah. transport. I'll give you an example. Yeah. If a drop, uh, let's say uh, a ride on, on a bus, will cost a hundred naira in the past. So fuel prices rise now from uh, what it was, say, on the 30th of May, and suddenly it becomes 200 naira. How do you justify that? You are carrying the same number of passengers, say 14 passengers or 18 passengers. Suddenly it becomes 200 naira. You make more money mm. as, a, as a transporter. And then, of course, every other person who is trading adds on to that price. You know, Kingsley, uh, you know the point you've just raised, quite interesting. Um, the uh, national president of the road transport uh, and players association in one of you know the interviews we had raised this you know uh, uh, concern mm -hmm. you know and and he, he revealed that over uh, a, a thousand ten thousand of the vehicles now run on gas which is cheaper mm -hmm. you know but efforts to get some of their members you know to reduce the the the, the, the cost of transportation you know um, has been has, has, has not been successful. So there are people who actually, you know, deliberately hike their transport costs. I agree so, with so, you. So, so, so what is the what is the best approach? The best approach would not be by legislation. It will only be by interaction, interaction, by conversation, ultimately. by persuasion. That's it. A and then stick and carrot and prove to people that it actually becomes a boomerang at a stage. Absolutely, you get sucked Absolutely. into it when you think you're making more. Naira, Absolutely, you know. And, and they have this mentality, Claire and Chukudi, oh, that every other person else is benefiting from the economy. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. Oh, they will tell you politicians, they, they, are, they are living big, they are living large. So this is our own national cake. So we must, uh, 
get our pound of flesh from you. Some will tell you, oh, Chukudi, ah, you sit in front of the TV, of the screen every now and then, you meet a lot of people. So you must be very... Precisely. You must, you must have all the money. That's I the wonder how many calls Kingsley gets. Ah, <laughs> no, I mean, that's... that's uh, we try to handle we try to handle those things. And uh, I'm sure some people will... Uh, it's yeah. you behind your back. Yeah. They don't mind him. He yeah. doesn't. I just said, that, look at me. You follow? I said, look at me. Don't, <laughs> don't <laughs> deny a few naira notes I, to people who believe in I you. Said, okay? I said, look, Kingsley. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm a civil servant. I know. I'm only entitled <laughs> to a backyard, you know, uh, a farm in my backyard, which I don't have. You know. So, but so, anyway, um, there are one or two stories before we go and break. I just like us to look at. Yeah, I know you want to take those stories. There is, sorry, uh, yeah. <laughs> there, there are two stories I want to. It's funny, but yeah. not so funny. Is it two? two uh, this one is. <laughs> I, I didn't see it on the front page. I was, yeah. I've been looking for it inside the paper. I read it last night uh, online, uh, and this is from News Guru, a very reliable source. It says, "Native insurance fails witch doctor mm -mm. as unknown gunmen kidnap him in Anambra." And uh, the story goes, a native doctor, very quickly, known as Aqua Okuko Tiwaraki, that is to say an egg that breaks palm knot, was believed to possess power of disappearance, but could not disappear when the kidnappers came for him. This took place at Oba. Oba is between uh, Onicha and Oweri. And Obosi. Unfortunately, Oba. yeah, uh, yeah, and unfortunately uh, two of his uh, guards, uh, armed guards, uh, were, were, were neutralized in the process of this kidnap. So uh, it's a sad story, uh, but again, that tells you for those who are running to uh, such persons, you know, for native insurance, that, that insurance. Africa should okay, wake that, up. That's if you don't, don't pay yes. the premium, the insurance please, please, Africa should wake up from please, slumber to, to go, to, and add one and one to get two. To, to go, we need to, we need to, we've been asked to uh, yes. address it at time, but I'd just like to point this out. It's on the inside page of uh, the punch. Supervisors, invigilators, selling wire questions online. Again, this is, you know, for us to know that supervisors and invigilators do sell wire questions online, but this story is just telling us of the arrest that wire, you know, you know, had been able to make of these people. So this is very bad. And I also like to commend Uni Abuja, University of Abuja, and also other universities that have reacted or that are reacting and are partnering with us, with the NTA, in a frequent call, you know, um, against rape and rapists, any form of sexual harassment. Uni Abuja, the story here today is that two lecturers had been dismissed for sexual harassment. So it's kudos to University of Abuja. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's a that's good the, one. That's the way to go. I pity them. People are struggling to stay afloat economically and they have time to, you know, be forced by the be uh, beating of the groins to go get in, in trouble. This is I pity them. This, this, is, this, is, early, this is early hours. I pity them. This is early hours, Chukudi. But uh, yeah, 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 we're, we're going we're gonna to be. I, I don't know. We're, 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 this story, I think, is something we'll take on because at some point he said, oh, he went on. At another point, he didn't go on. Inspector General of Police insists on withdrawal of mobile police from VIPs. That okay. is to say, the IGP is saying that. The security subsidy for VIPs will be withdrawn. We hope that actually it is carried out. We'll have time to discuss this it's, some other it's, day. it's a topic for Good Morning Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Chooks the boy. Thank you, Claire. Can you bounce out of the studio? I can see clearly now, so why can't I do that? Let's go for a short break. Hi, right, Johnny Nash. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We take a short break now. When we return, we get ahead with conversion of your vehicle and my vehicle and our vehicles from petrol to auto gas, if you so desire. All right. Um, welcome back to the program. And it's happening live uh, right here in our studio in Abuja, the NT headquarters. So. Our conversation this morning is on conversion of vehicles to auto gas. That's from uh, petrol use to gas use. Let's listen in to this background report by correspondent Abdul Salam Chupro. The recent removal of fuel subsidy in Nigeria has no doubt affected the lives of Nigerians across the country and generated a lot of discuss. While many Nigerians agree that the subsidy had to go, they stress that the consequences of the removal is making life difficult 
as prices of goods and services, such as the cost of transportation, food, among others, have jacked up significantly. While the government is making efforts to roll out palliatives towards cushioning the effects of the removal, the question of using alternative sources of energy outside petrol to power vehicles has been gathering momentum. One of such alternatives is the conversion of petrol engines to auto gas, while vehicles will utilize gas which is believed to be cheaper than petrol. Some years ago, not many would have considered this alternative as almost everyone was consumed with petrol-powered vehicles. As a child of necessity, auto gas-powered engines may not be new globally, but certainly something that Nigerians would have to begin to shift towards, looking at its advantages and challenges for cheaper transportation. The Nigerian Institute of Transportation Technology, NITT, says it is building workshops across the country to assist Nigerians convert their petrol-powered vehicles to auto gas to cushion the effects of fuel subsidy removal and reduce transportation costs. The institute also maintains that it is working in partnership with some manufacturers of the conversion kits which would be used at its workshops to enable Nigerians have cheaper conversion from premium motor spirit to auto gas. It would be recalled that during the launch of the National Auto Gas Rollout Initiative in December 2020, the government had promised that 1 million vehicles would be converted to run on gas before the end of 2021. Even though this target may not have been met, experts maintain that it is a worthwhile venture with potential benefits for the economy and the environment, urging the government to fine-tune its plans and work closely with the private sector to ensure its success. They strongly believe that if this is achieved, Nigerians will be able to have cheap transportation while the economy and environment will be better for it. The big question is, how easy is it to carry out this conversion and what is the cost implication? How accessible is the conversion to interested motorists and what are the guarantees that auto gas may not eventually become costly as petrol. Guests on the program will be speaking to these and more shortly. All right, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Salam Jibril, for that background. Uh, and of course, we have all the experts here with us uh, in the studios as well as also from uh, remote locations. Uh, here in Abuja, we'd like to welcome Jelani uh, Aliyu, a very well known figure in the automotive industry. He's uh, Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council. Jelani, we're glad to have you again on Good Morning Nigeria. It's a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Also here with us in the studios is Dr. Mohamed Ibrahim, Chairman of Nigerian Gas Expansion Program. Dr. Ibrahim, glad to have you this morning. Thank you very much. National Gas Expansion Program. National Gas Expansion Program. National Gas Expansion Program. Well, I didn't have that. <laughs> All right, sorry. All right. Okay, so um, also joining us from our Kaduna studio is engineer Abdul Aldu and his former chairman, Nigerian Society of Engineers, Kaduna Branch. He's also chief lecturer, Department of Mechanical Engineering at the Kaduna State Polytechnic. I uh, would like to welcome you, engineer Ab Aldu. So, good morning, Nigeria. would like to good morning good morning nigeria all right let's uh, welcome mr lua shagun olajuan uh, the md ceo thld group and founder autogas africa and he joins us via zoom all the way from the united kingdom mr olajuan thank you very much for joining us it will be um, good if we could just uh, tilt up a bit so we could have a better view. <laughs> aha, aha, thank you. Much for having me. All right, uh, gentlemen, once again, it's our pleasure uh, to have you join us. I'm sure for a number of Nigerians who are watching us and are literate would have been hearing of hybrid vehicles uh, for many years. 
Uh, and then others would also have heard of uh, electric cars and so on and so forth and, and the movement away from the use of polluting uh, fossil fuels to uh, more environmentally friendly uh, energy sources. But for us, it looks like uh, this is a moment of uh, truth and recognition that uh, probably the demon that we'll be running away from, this is the time for us uh, to actually uh, encounter it and get a monkey off our back. So fuel subsidy is gone <coughs> and uh, everybody, everyone is sweating, including those, of course, who are comfortable uh, because of the knock-on effect. Uh, what are the ways to get out of the uh, high cost of petrol? for vehicle users. We have your Jalani, you are here, you will tell us how many vehicles perhaps we have in our country and what the issues are. Is conversion from the use of petrol to auto gas potentially a game changer for us at this time and even going forward? Let's begin with you. Yes, uh, it is a game changer. Uh, you know, I'd like to begin by saying uh, we, as a people and as a nation, must not be afraid of technology uh, because it has this ability to come in and really change the lives of hundreds of millions of people. Uh, the National Automotive Design and Development Council has always believed in adopting advanced technology to provide newer, more effective, safer, more cost-effective vehicles. We have been promoting uh, CNG-powered uh, vehicles for quite a while now, as much as uh, also uh, electric vehicles. And uh, we already have uh, manufacturers in the country uh, that uh, provide uh, CNG-powered vehicles. Uh, Innoson out of Inewi, also Oma out of Inewi, and now also TVS, they'll be providing uh, uh, three-wheeler uh, CNG-powered vehicles. So the momentum has already be, been on. Uh, so this is a perfect opportunity for us, uh, I believe, uh, to showcase to the nation and really uh, have these solutions to make a difference to the average, uh, to the common Nigerian. Uh, so that technology exists in Nigeria and also the aspect of conversion. We've also been working very closely with relevant stakeholders, both within and outside the country, to promote conversion. So uh, the council has been working on, on this and we're ready uh, to, to, to continue to support the federal government in easing the uh, lives of uh, citizens. All right, uh, Mr. Jelani Aliu, thank you. <coughs> um, I, I, I want to start you know, from the basis and that's why my question will go to the Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim, who is chairman of the National Gas Expansion uh, Program. I've, I've had you know, several uh, conversations with you and uh, you shared with me some of the you know um, uh, you know beginnings and uh, in the conversation we had you you had you know uh, um, intimated that um, this is a program that started in the in the early 90s and to the extent that you know even some some companies were designated you know gas companies just for this purpose somewhere along the line it didn't work out. Why has it become expedient now to have this uh, policy, you know, worked out? And what what should Nigerians know about this policy? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for getting me back into your studios. Um, I will respond to your question. However, I think it's very important um, as an opener uh, to make certain clarifications. Uh, with a view to aid in Nigeria in its quest, you know, to adopting alternative uh, technology uh, that can ease the pains of the people. Uh, when the National Gas Expansion Program was uh, inaugurated on the 16th of uh, January 2020, the first uh, overtures we made was to uh, Mr. Jelani. You know, uh, he came to our office and we sat down. Uh, the second overtures we made was to the Nigerian Labour Congress. You know to explain to them exactly what we're you know, going to do and so on and so forth. And also to share with them the wealth of experience we've had over the years, you know, and how we needed their support. Um, ironically, that support didn't come to be candid with you, you know. So we trod on, we, you know, we just went on on our own. Uh, we started, therefore, contacting the auto manufacturers directly. They were expecting to get some directives, you know. This is where policy comes in from the various agencies of government, you know, and other stakeholders, that wasn't available, 
you know, at that time, you know, for some reason I couldn't explain, you know. Now the issue is, it has become expedient, you know, for Nigeria to explore its vast natural gas resources. And for so long, we had thought that the whole idea was just to make money from hydrocarbon exploration and production. I tell people all the time, crude oil is probably dollars, but development and sustainable development comes from natural gas. Okay. So the nation had placed a lot of premium and emphasis on exploring for crude oil while flaring natural gas that comes with crude oil. And the thing with Nigeria is that we are so endowed that every crude, every crude oil well that we have comes along with associated gas. Nigeria is actually a gas province with a drop of oil, you know, as we metaphorically state, you know. So I think it became expedient and it became clear to us in Nigeria, you know, uh, I think just most recently, past governments didn't really, you know, place much emphasis. And the policies were not geared, you know, towards exploring other alternative forms of energy within the fossil family. Okay, this is exactly what has happened. And until this government came in suddenly, and it became apparent that, look, you know, there's no other way out. You know, subsidy had to go. It was important. It went. And also a combination of subsidy removal, which will save na the nation a lot of money. And the issue around sustainability in the global sphere, you know, meant that we needed to get a member of the fossil family, which is less uh, dangerous to the atmosphere, which is natural gas, you know, uh, to get into the energy mix of the country. This is what has happened. It is clear today that Nigeria doesn't have much choice whether for power generation, transportation. Even if you come out with your electric vehicles, you need to generate power. And if you are going to focus on generating power on renewables, there are a lot of challenges. Number one is intermittency. Okay, if the weather goes, you know, funny, then you discover that your windmills may not survive. Your, you know, solar radiation may not give you the kind of charge that you need to be able to power. So, Natural gas is still essential. It is still a core energy fuel that you need to generate electricity, even for your electric vehicles. This is what has happened in this country. <coughs> Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim, I think that uh, it's important to clarify uh, for you to explain further some of the comments you made as a preface uh, to the other issues that you raised. When the former president launched the program to which you referred in 2020, I believe. We had a number of conversations on Good Morning Nigeria on that subject matter. And the then Minister of State Petroleum, Timmy Pre Silva, was our guest on a number of occasions. And he talked about what they were seeking to do. Some of his aides were also our guests on some of the issues that we raised. Uh, with respect to the uh, gas expansion program as part of uh, the Nigerian decade of gas. Now, you are saying that there seem to have been uh, a policy lacuna in driving this. And yet, what we were hearing was that, I think at that time, the cost of conversion of uh, a vehicle from petrol to uh, CNG was about 200,000 naira. And that the, the uh, filling stations that would... Um, uh, dispense the uh, auto gas were available and, and I recall uh, subsequently probably in 2021 or 20 or up to last year again when we're having a conversation on this subject matter there's one station there around Jabi and I went there a number of occasions and they said they have no gas so what kind of policy then were you expecting for which you didn't get cooperation so that if that lacuna was there we, we, we at least would try to make suggestions so it can be filled and then we don't have issues going forward now that everyone recognizes that uh, CNG is partly one of the ways to go to mitigate the harshness of the removal of your subsidy. You know, every government, you know, functions on the basis of having uh, stakeholders, interested parties. And you have what you call the MDAs, you know, the ministries, departments and agencies. Yeah, government can come out with a policy. But if the departments and the agencies of government refuse to carry out those, you know, uh, what you call it, policies, you would expect that they should be reined in. We have, we've known, you know, that people work in silos, and that has been the bane of Nigeria. So it's, you know, fanciful to have a policy, but its implementation is often the challenge, you know, and this is exactly what has been the case in this, uh, um, in this case. 
when the policy around the National Gas Expansion Program came on board, there were actually four streams. We have what you call the gas-based industry, you know, initiative, which was, because if you take natural gas, and I keep repeating this, I'll try to simplify it. Natural gas, if you strip it of what you call the natural gas liquids, okay, you have what you call the dry gas. This is essentially what you use. We call it lean gas, you know, for vehicles, power generation, and so on and so forth. But that is not actually the real meat. The real meat is the natural gas liquids. Those are the component parts that you use for petrochemicals, you know, pharmaceuticals, you know, fertilizers, and so on and so forth. That is real for development. For us in the National, National, National Gas Expansion Program, we wanted to harness and come out with technology and systems that will use those natural gas liquids for the production of what you call composite cylinders. Because you can then produce what you call you know, uh, um, composite cylinders without importing steel. Now, the composite cylinders are the new cylinders you have you know, for LPG all over, the country, uh, all over the world. They're lighter, and you can get the raw materials 100% from natural gas to the gas-based industries. From the gas-based industries, you can therefore, like I said, get the natural gas liquids and produce other things. We have the auto gas initiative. And again, the auto gas initiative, there are actually three, again, subsets. Like I said in the last you know, intervention I had, we have auto gas is actually gas for, that uses liquefied petroleum gas, butane and propane, or, pro or propane alone. Then you have the LNG, which is the liquefied natural gas, okay, which you can use for long haul vehicles that go 2,000 kilometers. And then you now have the compressed natural gas, you know, that you put in what you call caskets, you know, at about 250 bars. You use those ones for only vehicles within a radius of 200 and 300 kilometers radius. Okay. Now, the issue is this. What led, you know, <coughs> to the, lacu the policy lacuna that you just mentioned? The MDAs were not really interested. Which MDAs? Most of the MDAs we spoke with, they were not really committed. You know, they had their own programs. And we kept on telling them that, look, listen, it will eventually happen in this country whether we like it or not. Subsidy will be removed at some point. Number two, the stakeholders were not getting the right body language, you know. Sorry, sorry to interject. I'm sorry. Yes. Let's keep it here. These MDAs, yes. are mm -hmm. they government, you know? Of course they are government, government NDAs. NDAs. They, are, they are government NDAs. And Ministries, departments, yeah, and agencies. Yeah, exactly, yes. And, and, they, and they didn't show any positive in response and then and then, you, and then government relaxed i'll give you an example one of the first things we identified you know has been you know an issue around the implementation to expand the utilization of natural gas in the country were regulatory challenges okay so we sat down we took the entire regulations we reviewed them in a manner to enable you know, uh, uh, entry into the gas, you know, uh, stream, okay? So that all the permits, all the licenses, the process of getting approvals and so on and so forth. Then for the DPR, we reviewed everything in 2020. The moment the PIA was, you know, passed in, I mean, the, well, the PIA came into operation. The new set of people that came reversed everything we did, you know. And we're talking about ease of doing business. So the gains that we achieved from the year 2020 to 2021, you know, 2020 to 2021, were lost because all those impediments that we had removed, okay, in order to enable you know investors to come into the you know business, were reversed. In that case, what do you do? You understand? So you know, it, if, whether, even in the security, you know, uh, uh, what they call the system, you had about everybody working in silos. It's only now that, you know, we're now seeing the imperative of working, you know, together. Mr. Jalini knows, I went to him several times. We had meetings. Okay, let us work together, jointly develop this. It's only of recent that we're now seeing that overtures, you know, being reciprocated. We made overtures to several other agencies. The first, like I said, another stakeholder that we made was the Nigerian Labor Congress. In fact, let me tell you, Claire, what was so disturbing. All the unions in the oil and gas industry shut their doors at, to, at us. Pengerson, Nupeng, they refused to participate in it at all. So so this, is, this, is not a, this is not a solo conversation. Yes, it, 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 I, I was going to, I, 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 but I think it's useful uh, to have this background so we know where we're going. 
uh, and then avoid the uh, hurdles that had hampered or hobbled uh, the uh, speedier movement uh, towards cleaner fuels uh, for our automobile industry in the first instance. But I, I, I don't know. Was it a matter of attitude or just uh, lack of knowledge or understanding of, of the greater benefits, if not dynamics, of matters around the I think, the again, is the body language, you know, from the administrators at that time. It wasn't clear that subsidy was going to be removed. Or let me even say it was clear that sub subsidy will never be removed. If subsidy was never going to be removed, then why waste your time in trying to develop an alternative? Why waste your time in, you know, bringing gas, you know, powered vehicles into the system? We had to travel to every single manufacturer. In 2020, December, okay, we were with Innocent. We went to, went to Innocent and we said, look, listen, you need to introduce, you know, uh, auto gas, I mean, gas powered vehicle into your, into your uh, lines. He wasn't interested. We, we spent the whole day with him to try to encourage him. And suddenly, two years down the line, he came on board. We got Uma Motors. We visited every single auto manufacturer in this country. They were not interested. They said, we're not getting the feelers that, yes, you know, auto gas will be the thing in the country. That was what, you know, stalled the, the entire program. They were not given that confidence that at some point subsidy will be removed and investors will never come. It's like Nguote refinery. It was only when Nguote was assured that eventually subsidy will be removed that he went about, you know, investing in his refinery. If you're not going to remove subsidy, nobody will invest in any system in order to use an alternative word to, to what he knows. So at, at what stage, because we, we, we need to move forward, at what stage is any um, NGEP, did you relax? What have you been doing since then and Very what has good. been the outcome? Exactly. So what did we do? We literally abandoned the NDEs and we started going directly to individual companies. So the first we did was we said, okay, look, listen, we started having what you call the stakeholders engagement. And I'm going to give kudos to uh, the former governor of Anambra State. Because immediately, Mr. Uh, the then president launched the auto gas initiative. Um, Willie Obiano of Anambra State invited us to Anambra. We had the first stakeholders engagement in Anambra. Anambra. We had over 1,500 people in attendance. We got all the state institutions. We developed a curriculum for the training of gas technicians that would do conversion. We came, it was during that period that we visited Innocent that we eventually got an investor, Omar Motors, to invest in auto assembly. It became the first auto, auto assembly plant in this country. Thereafter, we now started engaging all the state governments one after the other. We went to Ekiti State. We met the governor of Ekiti State. Our program is not just only about auto. We also have the power element. Because like we're saying, mm. what we try to do is to say, okay, look, you know what? We're going to have a multi-fuel system whereby you drive into a filling station, you see you know, gasoline being sold, you see diesel being sold, you see kerosene being sold, you see auto LPG, you see auto CNG, you see auto LNG, and you see electric charging point. In part of this program in HT State, what did we do? We went to Abward. We met Afia Babalola. Today, he's generating five megawatts. And that is giving rise to the airport in HT, which is coming up sometimes in September, October. So, so, the so, so in, in total, <coughs> how many cars would you say we have today running on gas. Yes, yeah, so that we can go. You see, we have roughly slightly more than 12,000 vehicles running on gas, small vehicles. And Dangote alone has converted over 15,000 of his trucks that hitherto were running on diesel to run on CNG as I speak. Most of the new vehicles coming into the country today, Coca-Cola, uh, on the cement plants, all of them are now bringing in NGVs, natural gas vehicles that run on LNG because of the long hauls. Okay. You know, so a lot of things are happening in the, in the, sec in, in, in the sector. Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Ibrahim, uh, thank you very much. I, I'm sure our viewers will understand uh, why we had to uh, spend uh, some more time with him so that uh, we extract uh, from him the very useful piece of information as to what our experience uh, had been in the past uh, couple of years. Uh, because there was a great deal of fanfare when the uh, uh, policy was launched and we had so many conversations and at the end of the day uh, nothing seemed to have gained traction. I know that Jelani is, will respond to some of the issues, particularly the policy lacuna and how it might be filled. 
and so that we don't make the same uh, mistakes that we made. But let's bring in the other guests. Uh, earlier, we introduced uh, Engineer Abdul uh, Audu. Engineer Abdul Audu is the former chair of the Society of Engineers, Kaduna uh, State Branch, and is, of course, of the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Kaduna Polytechnic, one of the country's oldest and most respected polytechnics. Engineer Abdul Audu, um, we're having you from Kaduna today rather than in our studios here in Abuja. One question I popped to uh, Jelani, I want to ask you the same question. Is the auto gas uh, now a new deal for us uh, in Nigeria or is it still come see, come sir? Um, it has to be the new deal because of the realities of the time that we are facing in Nigeria today uh, with regards to the use of white fuel. White fuel is um, a PMS and a AGO. That is the one people normally call diesel. Uh, the costs have escalated beyond the reach of the uh, common man and um, the mileage gained on consumption of the fuel, that is burning the fuel in internal combustion engines, uh, is now becoming, is, is costly now. So what the gas uh, conversion system is bringing in is less costs, cleaner drives, uh, more functional engines, and so on and so forth in all internal combustion engines, not just automobiles, even in um, uh, the generators that we have in our houses and other equipment. So the, we really have to embrace that aspect of technology to convert our vehicles and our other equipment to use uh, auto gas. Uh, the, the different types of gases that available have been listed. That is the natural, liquefied natural gas, compressed natural, natural gas, and um, um, uh, sorry, liquefied petroleum gas. There are three, the three different type of gases that can be available. So is the reality is here with us, and we just have to key in and make sure we use um, the opportunity available to us to expand the vistas of technological development in that area. Already, people are doing it but there is still more work to be done. Thank you. So stay, stay with you. I, I, I would like you from engineering point of view uh, to give us an insight what, what you think uh, might be the engineering, um, you know, I, I don't want to say challenges, the engineering makeup, you know, uh, that um, would be uh, car owners wishing to convert should expect. Mm, the challenges are very few because the equipment needed to, to make conversion are not much. You have very few equipment, very few parts you bring controllers, that is a, what we call ECU, electronic controlling unit. You bring reducers, you bring multi-valves, you bring injectors, gas tank, and switch over. Switch over devices that can help you to switch. If, if at all you want to run on dual fuel, that is uh, you want to run both on white fuel and at the same time on gas fuel. Uh, white fuel, like I mentioned earlier, is the PMS, the diesel. Um, if you want to switch over to that one, to any of the two at the same time. But if you want to run completely only on um, uh, gas, it's, 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 it's okay. It can still be done. So the major challenge I can see there is the retrofitting of your boots, the vehicle boots and other spaces for, for uh, the positioning of the tanks that are needed to taking the required quantity of gas that you use for uh, running the car. Um, you can see trucks. If you see trucks, I had a um, doctor just mentioned Dangote. If you look at Dangote trucks, you see those green, green cylindrical 
tanks behind them, sometimes in twos or threes, or sometimes up to four lying on each other. Those are the tanks that are used for storing um, petroleum gases or uh, compressed natural gases for running the trucks. So you need space. That is just in. So the, 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 the usual capacity of your boot will definitely reduce. Other than that, there is no serious um, technical challenge that you experience when you want to convert. It's just removal of some parts and replacing with others. But the ECU is already in our vehicle, whether we are using the white fuel or not, or uh, using the gas fuel. The ECU electronic control unit is, also, is all, always there. The injectors are always injectors. You only change the injector so that you can have the one that can take in the liquefied petroleum gas or compressed natural gas, as the case may be. So the the technical challenge is just not much. It's not much. It's, and it's safer to use um, auto gases. It's very safe and it's very clean. And your engine will run longer than the engine life. Will be will be better will last longer and the service life for example when you want to um, change your lubricating oil that is um, what we call the engine oil in the vehicle normally you, after some kilometers or after some period of time you want to run to the loop bay to have your oil change from the car uh, because you are running now on um, or if you are running on gas the contamination in the oil in the engine will be less. There will be no, no contamination. So the oil can last longer than you, 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 you used to have them in the engine. So the gains are rather more than they far, far, far outweigh the challenges that are there, if any. Uh, uh, Abdul Aldo, thank you very much. I'm sure one of the gains. Uh for some people, it, will be, it, it probably will not be possible for mechanics to also be sucking the gas as they used to suck petrol from uh, the vehicles of, uh, of uh, clients uh, who, who, who stop by. That's an issue we'll get into uh, uh, later on. But uh, let's uh, rejoin uh, via Zoom from the UK, Uluwa Shegun uh, Olajuwon, who was earlier introduced as the MD CEO and founder of Autogas Africa. Uh, Mr. Olajuwon, what has been your experience with respect to uh, use of auto gas? Yeah, good morning, Nigerians. Um, well, we've uh, we've seen quite a lot of uh, experience in different locations. Uh, that of the Nigerian market is totally different from that of the uh, European market, and is even different from that of the other African countries. Uh, the Nigerian market is uh, acceptance of auto gas is one of the major issues that we've uh, had. But uh, today, I can say to you, the fact that the subsidy is being removed, um, it gives people the immediate solution in terms of alternative uh, fueling. And like uh, what uh, Dr. M.M. said, it, it, there's been quite a lot of challenges, and I totally agree with him all he said. There's been resistance like, oh, okay, do we need it? Do, do, do we have to do it now? And the, the investment that is required as well, you know, people need to look at how soon and how quick and they have their cost of uh, investment in terms of returns on investment. Because when you have these stations, you need vehicles to come and refer there. And if they don't refer, trust me, uh, you can make your money back. You know, the, the cheapest CNG station that can sell 550 uh, cars daily is about 120,000 USD. So imagine making such investment and um, you haven't got, you've got about one or two uh, cars that are coming to refer in your station. So you have issues, you know, and uh, for LPG it's easier because most people are selling LPG for cooking gas now and it's difficult to, to, to again, for that you have to modify the uh, LPG plant to allow vehicle refueling. Once you refer into cylinders, you can also refer into cars. This comes with a different nozzle as well. So there's quite an investment, there's, there's quite a lot of investment that is required in these um, auto gas that uh, business owners will not just say no, because government say let's run to, let's change and let's use gas, they can make such investment. And I believe that was why there was a 250 billion 
yeah, then that they claimed uh, that that could help uh, business owners to make such investments and uh, payment returns are, 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 are more easier. We've been to some banks, uh, I can tell you for free, uh, 2021, just before the launch 2020, uh, to, 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 to take loan for, for, for to build all these uh, auto gas stations nationwide. And the banks were asking for practically everything, you know, and when you look at it, it took be difficult for you to, to pay back. There's a company that I know that started Autogas in uh, 2028 to 2018. They made this investment for Autogas only. They built all the stations across Nigeria, but obviously there were no cars. And they have to start modifying those stations to sell for cooking gas. So there's a lot of challenges, you know, but again, uh, these are the steps that we will need to take to achieve uh, gas adoption as an alternative, you know. There's a demand now, so the demand will help, you know, and there's also the need for understanding. You know, most of these guys need strong, detailed expert involvement to justify. And I give credit to Dr. Evan, he's done well. He's, been pushing for these and he's got vast experience in these as well you know but again he's not going to put his money there these business owners must and have to put their money there we've imported quite a lot of conversion kits ourselves but you can't do it for free people need to pay for it to get their car converted and once you get your car converted you have to have stations that you will well for instance uh effects transport in 2020 2019 we converted one of their buses to run an LPG. So they were traveling from Lagos to Ore. They, they, there was an Uwanda station in Benin that can afford a car on gas. They had to drive five minutes out of the road to refer. That five minutes was so much that they, the customers, the, the passengers were complaining. So now, if there are no stations along the route of this uh, interstate, intercity movement, it should be even difficult. So it's not about uh, refueling stations, it's not about combustion stations. It's about how accessible, how available are these stations. You know, if we see the conversion for CNG in the whole of Abuja, today we have only one nipple station. That's so, so I don't know the Abuja uh, area that much, but imagine you driving all the way to uh, airport road to refer, then going back to town. So we need stations along just the way we have the petrol stations. So there are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of challenges, but all of these things can be easily managed, you know, even up north. You know, like what Dr. M said, you, you need LNG, but we also can use LNG to regasify up north, you know, to have CNG. CNG, you cannot transport for more than 300 kilometers, as the rule says in Nigeria. But yes, if there are trucks and cars that are running on CNG up north, how do you now provide CNG for them? This is, can be achieved through LNG regasification where you can have CNG there. And we have CNG up north, uh, LNG up north via Greenview and all of that. There are some processing that can be achieved and adopted in a, like a short time plans that we can have these solutions and there will be gas practically everywhere. But everybody, everybody must work together. It's not individual, uh, not so, no, no, not uh, lone movement. No, they have to be all parties involved. And there has to be contribution from everyone. But yes, there have been challenges, and these challenges can be. I think I think it's more of a, a ego issue now. People saying, "I'll do it myself." You know, I can do it myself. Or who are you to tell me what to do? Or you know, all of those things. But it's now of national concern, and I believe uh, we are on the right track to get things done. Thank you very much. Ah, Mr. Olashegun Olajun, thank you very much. You. You, you, you just compounded what I thought was an easy uh, conversation. And uh, ab initio, um, we had all thought that, well, like engineer uh, Abdul said, I mean, it, it just would require only retrofitting your, you know, the, the, the boot of your car, uh, every other thing are already in place. And, you know, the, the, the impression is that ah, it's quite cheap. And Dr. Ibrahim also made us believe that. This comes cheap. But you have said investment is required. There are quite a number of challenges. But please tell me, why do we need... So, For instance, maybe a car owner wants to convert. Why, why does it cost so much to have my car, you know, 
converted to auto gas. If I have everything, it's just to retrofit my car boots. Don't forget, you're converting a petrol engine to run on gas. So just like you're having another fuel, this is like an invention. You're inventing and you're making a car. Uh, uh, we can say a lemon world. You're, 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 you're doing magic. So how can you possibly make a petrol engine? Just imagine putting diesel in a petrol car. It's gone. But now there are technology that will allow such to happen. So there has to be monetary uh, investment that, that matches such uh, capacity. We have some conversions that is about a million naira for one four-liter uh, four engine. These are OEM installations, brand new cars. So when you say uh, the, the, the big cars, the, the, the government used all these brand new products and all of that, it will cost about 1.5 million to provide that because they are up most sophisticated component that are used for them. So even the basic little cars for normal Uber taxifiers that are being used, there have to be that cost uh, justification of the technology. So it's, it's not going to come cheap. And these are things that will make uh, you got gas utilization easy. So now the ECU, which is the brain box of the, the entire process, will process and pass the message. Don't forget, the engine is still, as far as the engine is concerned, it's being powered by a fuel. So all of those processes of uh, 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 utilization uh, from the tank, like uh, the, the, the different kinds of tanks, you know, like the composite tanks that Dr. Emma mentioned, those are even. The composite on its own, a liter, is about $12. Now imagine you need about two, uh, two, 20 or 25 liters of that composite tank. So you have to multiply by that 20 liters or 25 or even 50 liters uh, tank capacity. So it's not going to be cheap. Then are they cheaper components? Yes. But the cheaper they become, the more dangerous they are. And that's why NADDC Dr. Uh, the DJ has been working extensively to ensure that the best components are brought into the into the country without a substandard product. There are products. Just a few months ago here in the UK, just a station I used to for my LPG car, there was an explosion. But again, does that stop uh, utilization of gas? No. What if you look at if you have to investigate that is not down to gas installation component being used, substandard component being used. So there must be all of those things that we need to checkmate. So now, do you want to go cheap to endanger not just yourself, your car, and the people around you? So there have to be cost uh, implication for quality conversion. And these are components that have been built for over 20, 30 years. These guys have converted over 3 million, 4 or 5 million conversion uh, uh, in retrofitting nationwide, worldwide. So they have to be that checks so if someone said to you i can convert your car for one fifty thousand naira, please run away it's not possible in ghana we had the same issue whereby one of the major markets in ghana the guys were not experienced but because there was a regular retrofitting of cars they get to know the parts that are needed for conversion and it's a matter of time i grew up in the north in nigeria there are pharmacies in the market there in southern area they will tell you all the medication that you need but they are not doctors because there's a constant use uh, engagement with medical prior items, they understand what is needed. This is the same thing. So we need to ensure we have a very perfect, structured, monitored installation process. Will there be scars? Yeah. Maybe one in a million? Yes. But we must ensure that we pay good money for good retrofitting. And we also ensure that people do good investment in this uh, uh, part of the business. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Olajuwon, for the explanations you were also proffered in the course of this conversation. We'll come back to the studios. Chelani uh, Aliu, well, we just decided uh, for the others to speak and then give you the opportunity uh, to respond if there are any specifics to which you may wish to uh, respond. But uh, on top of that, would be the conversion issues that they have raised. Uh, we can also focus on the supply issues later. That will go to Dr. Ibrahim to say, I convert my vehicle, where do I get gas uh, to utilize? So tell us if there are responses you may wish to have. We talked about the silo mentality, the policy lacuna, 
and uh, the the fact that uh, if you like uh, consumer resistance uh, to conversion early on so how do we get them uh, now to uh, have a buy-in into the new deal yes um, you know I'd like to begin by saying that dr. Ibrahim and his team have been doing an excellent job over the last couple of years in promoting uh, gas generally which would include auto gas uh, driving the national gas expansion program uh, and we've also been working very closely with THLD and their CEO specifically uh, you know when we look at the big picture right, the really big picture uh, Nigeria Africa humanity uh, look at about 50 100 years from now what are we looking at to power our transportation solutions we're definitely looking at electricity because right, that is the future is already here for transportation but before we get there, gas is definitely a very effective and applicable transition fuel. And with the huge amounts of uh, resources and gas that Nigeria has, it only behooves us as a nation to take maximum advantage of that resource and power, not just our vehicles, but our economy and our lives. Uh, gains have been made, so how do we consolidate on all that has been done now and move forward in a very expedited uh, manner? The NADDC, our primary function is to support the production of a whole vehicle, 100% of vehicle, right? Not just the components. We are here to enable vehicles to be made in Nigeria for Nigerians, for Africans. And to that respect, we support Inoson, Oma, Stallion, uh, you know, Mikano, Elizade to produce vehicles. And as we move forward, with the new developments in energy conservation, we are promoting electric and, of course, CNG-powered vehicles. We'll continue to promote these companies to produce fully factory-produced CNG-powered vehicles. Policy is very important. We've been discussing with the THLD on a specific CNG or auto gas policy to address the challenges faced by the automotive sector in terms of providing CNG for these vehicles. It'll, it'll talk about incentives, fiscal, non-fiscal. It'll talk about uh, regulation standards, which is very important. He brought that up. Because it's one thing to say, go ahead and convert a vehicle, but it needs to be done the right way. And that is why NADDC has also you know, developed national occupational standards. This will be the set of academic you know, regulations and, and criteria when you train people to uh, 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 convert pe vehicles or to maintain them that are all powered by gas, how do you do it professionally? How do you do it safely? So we are also regulator. It is our job to make sure that all these conversions, all this production, all these uh, stations, if it deals with automobiles, we would be there to ensure it is done safely. So we will continue to work very closely with all the relevant stakeholders and ensure that this is promoted. Uh, in terms of safety, uh, in terms of uh, awareness, we did have a workshop and we're going to have more of them. We did even print a handbook on the safety of using CNG as a fuel for vehicles. So NADDC has been promoting, has been supporting CNG, and now we are even moving at full speed ahead in collaboration with both other government agencies and private sector, like I mentioned, THLD. Uh, just recently, a very big client uh, in one of the cities wants to convert their vehicles to CNG. We're putting them, uh, we're, we're bringing them together on, on the table to discuss with potential companies that can do that conversion for them. So we're here uh, to really continue with that momentum with the sole objective of relieving, uh, uh, you know, some of the challenges that Nigerians face across the country. All right, uh, Mr. Jalani Aliu, thank you. <coughs> I, I, I would ask you, but this question you would respond when we come back from the break. Um, because I, at, at the beginning, Mr. Ibrahim said um, the uh, National Automobile Design and Development Council, you know, you, you had some... Um, you had some reservations. I mean, you didn't come on board immediately. So I, I, I'm wondering if you had some concerns, if there were concerns at, 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 the, at the time. And um, at what point now are you working with the National 
uh, gas expansion program. I would like you to respond to this when we come back from the break. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. All right, welcome back. Uh, it's Good Morning Nigeria. Just before we went on the short break, I had uh, thrown a question to uh, Mr. Delaney Aliu. But um, we, 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 we had a little discussion, you know, off camera. And um, I think my, 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 the first part of my question uh, may not suffice again, uh, because I now understand why, you, you know, and all that. But ju ju just tell us now, going forward now, um, how easy, how easy uh, will it be to have, you know, federal, I mean, cars, you know, uh, owned by federal government? Buses owned by federal government. Is it, would it be easy to start with these cars first, co get them converted, or all, all cars used by you know government and government parasitals? Is it is it is it a step we could begin with? Well, we uh, if you remember, we presented to the National Economic Council uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, information. We made a presentation on CNG-powered vehicles and electric-powered vehicles. A and both were really very much accepted. Uh, so much that the federal government now has committed to support the development of both uh, immediately uh, with CNG and then also move on uh, and continue with, with, with electric, so both. Um, so there is now real commitment for the federal government to support uh, CNG. Uh, and one of the primary ways federal government can do that is to enforce executive orders three and five that mm -hmm. mandate purchasing locally produced goods uh, vehicles. Uh, like I mentioned, we already have OMA and uh, Innocent producing CNG powered vehicles. So, and you know, at the National Ec Economic Council, the state governors are also there, and they've also expressed interest in rolling out CNG powered vehicles. In their, in their states. So we'll continue to work with them to enable that these vehicles are on the road as quickly as possible. For example, I think MDAs need to be mandated to use uh, these types of vehicles. For over a year now, NADDC has had uh, CNG powered buses uh, that we use uh, for our uh, programs and, and, and our staff now to ease the subsidy removal, have these the buses bringing them uh, to uh, from work. So uh, there needs to be commitment from uh, the top down, from the down, from the ground up. Uh, and, and we're very glad that is happening. Uh, state governments, uh, tr transportation and logistics companies also need to come on board to support this initiative of using these types of vehicles that are cleaner in, uh, in the types of fuel that they use. But like has been mentioned earlier, it's really not about one agency or one body driving this change. It has to be a concerted effort by all relevant public and private sector entities to achieve uh, the successes uh, needed. Well, well because NTA uh, to have our cars converted. It depends We're on our partner. Yes. yes. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll work on that. We'll work towards that. Okay. Yes. We'll, hold, we'll hold you to that. <coughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> but uh, but you didn't promise that it will be for free. That's uh, well, you didn't well, say that. No. Well, didn't say that. didn't say, say you partners. We will, we will work out. It, it we will work out the details. It didn't say it will be for free. Mr. It, Mr. Uh, Jelani, Jelani. We will work out the details. We will work out the details. Exactly. We will work out the details. I like that echo. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Doctor uh, Mohammed Ibrahim and the, the other guests, because we are mining a great deal of information. Uh, it is one thing to say at the consumer end, look, it, petrol is so expensive, you go and convert your vehicle to CNG or whatever. Once you convert it, then you start using it and you find challenges. Uh, Olajuwon has talked about the challenges that investors face. Uh, uh, you've also talked about regulatory issues that hobble investors. You've also, in fact, you talked about the ecosystem for auto gas in, as one of the segments in the gas expansion program. Uh, and the lack of cooperation amongst MDAs 
in all of this. So for the limited time we have for this first part of this conversation, what is it that you would like to see in terms of a policy attitude? And in answering that question, I, I, you, you name names. That is to say, mention the critical MDAs and then mention the coordinators uh, who would drive this. Because if we, as you said, and we know this, implementation is a major challenge for us in our, in our country because of the silo mentality. So who are those that you think will be critical in this ecosystem so that uh, at the end of the day, we have a more holistic approach to consequence management of fear subsidy removal. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let, let me start by assuring Nigerians that uh, gas is very safe. And when I go to talk to people, the first thing I say is that, do you cook with gas in your homes? And they say yes. I say, can you cook with petrol in your kitchen? And they say no. So that clearly shows you that yes, indeed, gas is very safe. Now, let me also say this. Um, Mr. Jelani mentioned about the National um, uh, Council of State and so on and so forth. Since this administration came on board, the only, I can say, committee that has not been invited to participate in all these discussions is the National Gas Expansion Program. And this is the only program that has all the data, all the information that has worked over the last three and a half years. The first set of CNG stations in this country I was part of the people that conceived them in 2005. So that is beside the point. The first thing we did, by March 2020, we already developed a draft executive order. By March 2020. Before the lockdown. Before the lockdown. Well, in fact, during the lockdown, we went to every single gas province in this country to confirm the volume of gas being produced the state of the assets, okay, and also worked with LMA petrochemicals that I had chaired in the past to make sure that we develop composite, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, raw materials for the manufacture of composite cylinders so that when the autogas policy comes into being, it's only the conversion kit minus the tanks that will be imported into the country. The executive order draft which we d uh, prepared was to make it mandatory that by 2025, every single prime mover, not only vehicle, every prime mover that will come into the country must be dual fuel, in such a manner that it will be able to run on both either diesel and CNG or LNG, or gasoline and LPG, or CNG, triple fuel. So the executive order was to make sure that all the stakeholders and you know, interested parties <coughs> that are preparing he never saw the light of the day. What do we need to do to move forward? You see, when I, on the energy security, there are three components. You have availability of different sources of energy. You have energy efficiency, OK. And the third component, obviously, is the determination of the state administrators to ensure that the program is implemented. What the nation needs to do, and I've been seeing the meetings with the labor on subsidy removal, I've been seeing the National Economic Council and so on and so forth. You know, the focus on electric vehicles, to me, is very good. Just like, you know, Mr. Jelani said, you know, advancement. But what are you going to do with the 30 million vehicles that we already have in the country? There's going to be value destruction. So what we need to do, therefore, is to have a comprehensive program. And we already have the strategy in place within the National Gas Expansion Program on what to do, OK? That is to convert these 20, 30 million vehicles to start running you know, on gas. Which of the gas streams? Again, they're getting it wrong. Everybody's talking about CNG, CNG, CNG. No, the lowest hanging fruit for Nigerians here, and we have done it without any government support. When we realized that the MDS were not you know, supporting, we decided on our own, the National Gas Expansion Program, without using, expert, uh, without using any consultant, we now introduced the migration from gasoline to LPG by small holders. So people with one, two, three, four, five kV generators, okay, we can encourage them. So there was massive importation of combustion kits. Prior to May 29th, 2023, the combustion kit was going for 6,500 naira. 
and Nigerians all over the country have done a lot of conversion. Okay. Now, obviously, with the Naira dollar exchange rate, it's about 12,000 to 15,000 Naira per conversion kit. So for vehicles... for the generators. For the generators. We're already watching, and we have done a very good research. Again, without anybody financing it, in the next couple of months, we're going to have conversion kits for KK3 wheelers, which is that to be affordable. Again, without any support from anybody, right? So what we need to do for vehicle owners is not to focus on CNG. The lowest hanging fruit is to focus on LPG. The first thing we did by 2021 January was we mandated the, the then Department of Petroleum Resources to carry out an audit of every retail outlet in this country. And they carried out you know, the audit. And we confirmed that 9,000 retail outlets in Nigeria can become what you call the multi-fuel you know, retail outlets. But the, first, the lowest hanging fruit we said was that consider every single station that has what you call the add-on the 2.5 kg, you know, 2.5 ton LPG, you know, cylinders in their stations. And the DPR came down to us and said it was dangerous. And I said, no, what you need to do is that bury those tanks. Once you bury the tanks, you know, of LPG, you now run a pipe to the, uh, what do you call it, and put a dispensing pump so that you can dispense auto LPG. To dispense auto LPG is very cheap. If there's, you know, a concerted effort among all the stakeholders to do that, we will see virtually every, in every community in this country today, you are going to have an auto LPG available that you can use for your car, okay? You can use for your generator. At what price, please? Because <coughs> very good. Was talking the about conversion, Mr. So Olajuwon knows very well, the conversion kit for auto LPG, for LPG, which is actually the real auto gas, is cheaper than that of CNG. The reason why I'm not going to give you a price is because suddenly, you know, the Naira exchange rate is a major issue. There are other challenges, you know. In fact, one of, in, in, by June 2021, I'm giving you facts, and they're all re documented. We, we carried out an uh, exhaustive uh, what, analysis of the Nigerian environment, f specifically for LPG. And we warned that if government does not do a certain number of things, by December 2021, the price of LPG in, in July, June 2021, was about 3,000 for 12.5 kg cylinder. We won that to get to one, I mean, to almost 10,000 naira. It happened. Mm -hmm. There were policy issues, there were regulatory issues, there were operational issues, there were commercial issues, there were subnational issues, okay? There were issues that we said needed to be identified. I'll give you another simple example. If you load a truck of uh, LPG, there were labor issues. You go to the LPG depots, okay, that are more than 68 taxis on just one material, one truck. Levies. Levies, taxis, all sort of things. Okay, to reduce the cost of conversion kit in line with what uh, Mr. Olajuwon said, you again have to look at, you know, regulatory issues. You have to look at issues like if I import the conversion kit, because we're in a state of emergency as far as energy is concerned in this country. And I'm warning again, if something is not done, you know, especially for LPG, which is the lowest hanging fruit that we can use for <coughs> both our cars, you know, also even in the United States, nobody, it, CNG is not used for buses. You can check it out. It is propane. You know this more than I do, right? So what is this emphasis about CNG? People don't have information, just continue focusing on this. If you reduce the taxes, the duties, okay? on the importation of the conversion kits, you will have them affordable. We've seen, we've seen a number of uh, posts on the social media of persons displaying their conversion kits uh, for their generators. Uh, and then they also saying that the generator is now powered either by petrol or by uh, LPG. 
uh, at the point has come up here, auto LPG, CNG, the other one LNG. Uh, well, uh, how does a consumer uh, know the difference? Uh, we, we, we know that sometimes uh, we, we can be somewhat careless in our environment. Where you are in Kaduna, uh, there, there was an unfortunate incident at a gas handling plant and a DG of, uh, of uh, one of the MDAs, national MDAs, of course, unfortunately was uh, a victim. Uh, he was one of those who died in that, in that uh, explosion. So uh, what is the difference between this LPG and CNG? We also hear wet gas and dry gas. So he says low-hanging fruit. Tell us some more, the, the mechanics around all of this. Well, um, thank you very much. I am not a gas expert, but let me tell you the little I know that can help the audience. LPGs are the liquefied, that is liquefied petroleum gas. CNG is compressed natural gas. And LNG is, LNG is liquefied natural gas. Well, LPG which um, Dr. dwelled so much on in his um, explanation, is the common gas we use in our homes for cooking, liquefied petroleum gas. And um, it's called uh, such a name because it, it, can be, it is compressed first, I mean, condensed, let's put it that way, so that it can be easily transported. And the, contain, the, the container, what is supposed to carry it, is also bonded in a way, produced in a way that um, the material is strong enough to restrain the escape of the content in the, in the, in the gas. So they are all gases quite all right, but the liquefied petroleum gas is safer to use for the common man. Just like you said, you recall that some time ago, some months ago, I was in your, I think that was last year, I was in your studio in Abuja. We were talking about ethanol, how we can run vehicles on ethanol. And I remember saying something about the Nigerian in us. And um, Madam really tried to say, no, it's, it's not in, in her. But I want, you can hear other guests saying the same thing. We can be easily, we can be careless, we can, be, we can get carried away in this country. And uh, even like the, the vehicles that we use now, you go to a mechanic, uh, or guy will go manage and will manage this one. And that manage, management mentality comes into the average Nigerian very easily while running, even on equipment that he knew, he know little or nothing about. And that is where the fear is. Now, you talked about the current conversion that people are posting on social media and the rest for generators. You see people posting some hoses. I mean, sorry, using hoses. The normal cylinders that we have now for our cooking gases to the generators. Uh, some of those hoses are not good enough for such engineering applications. Because a little puncture, there will be problem, and the, the strength of the of the hose from your generating set or from any equipment that you want to convert. Anything can happen to the transporting hose along the line and before you know it, there will be trouble all over the place. And again, in Nigeria, like you know, let this thing, uh, let, the, let the conversion issue now get popular and you see all manner of parts coming in. They will tell you Belgium is better than the original. And truly, in Nigeria, you will see some Nigerians go to manufacturers, even outside the country, and request for uh, a particular standard, lower than what is um, normally acceptable, what is normally, what is safe 
for use in any device. And they bring it in. How they escape regulatory authorities is another question. It's another question that needs to be addressed. Nevertheless, we still have to focus on it. And we have to come in-house, going by all the executive, uh, presidential executive orders given. Doctor just mentioned executive order three and five. We need to activate some of these executive orders and make use of them so that we can produce some of these things to our own standard. Even though technology is universal and you need to adapt so that you can conform to internationally accepted standards by the ISO and the rest. But here, again, we need to also realize the fact that even if we start this conversion now, for a long time to come, we are still going to rely on a lot of imported uh, kits so long as we do not produce some of these things in Nigeria. And why, do we not, why can't we produce this in Nigeria? It's because we don't have the necessary materials, raw materials. Not that we don't have the expertise to bring this thing out, but the materials, like we don't have a, steel, a, a functional steel plant running to give us steel. We don't have aluminum plants that can give us aluminum, and so on and so forth. So, uh, engineer, engineer Abdul uh, Audo, we of course uh, uh, will have to live up the conversation at, at this stage, but this is the first part because there are many more issues that we'll touch on for the purposes of public enlightenment and then getting the right policy mix and uh, of course uh, inviting all stakeholders on board to ensure that uh, once we get on the highway to conversion, uh, it will be a smooth ride. We'd like to thank all our guests. Uh, we do hope that will oblige us again when we do re-invite you uh, for the continuation of uh, aspects of this conversation that we have not been able to exhaust uh, for uh, today. Uh, let's uh, appreciate uh, very warmly uh, Jelani Aliyev, Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council. Always a delight having you on Good Morning Nigeria. We also would like to thank uh, Dr. Mohamed Ibrahim, Chair of the National Gas Expansion Program. We appreciate your candor and uh, your passion for uh, a much better uh, usage of our gas resources. From Kaduna, a moment ago, we saw engineer Abdul Aoudou, former chair, Nigerian Society of Engineers in Kaduna, and senior lecturer, Department of Mech Engineering, Kaduna Polytechnic. Via uh, Zoom, we were joined by the MD CEO, THLD Group, and founder of Autogas uh, Africa. Thanks a lot for the very pertinent issues you raised about investment challenges in uh, auto gas. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, of course, uh, Claire, we have uh, a developing story right yes. now uh, that uh, you, 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 you want to introduce right now. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, we would like to join our correspondent. High Court in Ikoyi, Lagos, where, of course, uh, the uh, suspended former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefele is being arraigned. Um, we would like to join her correspondent Adiola Komi Akere at the Federal High Court in Ikoyi, Lagos. And the function is the arraignment of the suspended former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefele. All right, we're still waiting uh, to link up with our correspondent. Uh, once we're able to connect with her. Okay, um, just before we end, uh, good morning, Nigeria. Uh, let's quickly take a look at uh, sports. And then after that, uh, we hopefully we will join our correspondent, Adiola Komi Akiri, at the Federal High Court in Ikuyi, Lagos. So let's take sports now. Former Super Eagles forward Victor Moses was on target for Spartan Moscow, who defeated Orangeburg 3-2 in the first league game of the new Russian league season on Sunday. Moses scored in the fourth fifth minute to put Spartan Moscow 1-0 ahead. The win took Spartak to fourth place in the 16-team league table. And Super Eagles forward Ademola Lukman scored two goals as Atalanta hammered Swiss six-tier club Locano 10-0 in a pre-season friendly on Saturday. Lukman had an impressive debut season in Serie A as he scored 13 goals in 31 games. Meanwhile, Bundesliga club 
Bayern Leverkusen have announced the signing of Nigerian striker Victor Boniface from Belgian side Union saint gilles Leverkusen confirmed Boniface signing in a statement on their website. The 22-year-old put pen to paper on a five-year contract. Nottingham Forest have announced the signing of Ola Aina. The Nigerian international signed a one-year deal with options for the future also agreed on the contract. Another Nigerian international, Flying Eagles winger Jude Sunday, has linked up with Slovian club A.S. Trinson. So that's it for us on Good Morning Nigeria today. We thank you for being with us. Uh, the developing story my colleague talked about earlier, of course. Uh, stay with us uh, on uh, various news bulletins and you have an update on that uh, story. Join us again tomorrow for a fresh package of Good Morning Nigeria at the same time, 7 o'clock in the morning. Look after yourselves. I'm Kingsley Osadolo. All right, the call for you to join us in our fight against rape and rapist is still on. Please be our partner. I am Claire Adilabu Abdurazak. Have a pleasant day.